Hey everybody, today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by N. Gregory Mankiw. We're going to be working with the 6th edition and we're going to be doing chapter 2, problem number 1. The problem begins by telling us to draw a circular flow diagram. So let's start with that. So if we're going to draw a circular flow diagram, there are four components that we want to identify and then we want to think about the linkages between those components, or grammatically speaking, among those components. So what we can do here is we can notice that there are two main sets of players in an economy. We have households and we have firms. I'm going to put firms actually way over here. That these are going to be on the opposite sides of our circular flow diagram. And it doesn't matter which one you have on the left and which one you have on the right. Just make sure that your arrows that we eventually draw are consistent with the way that you drew this. So I'm going to put circles around these guys. These are two of the four things that we need. The other two are our two types of markets. So we have markets for goods and services. So let's just call these goods and services markets. Maybe I'll put a square around them to remind us that these are markets and these are players in the markets. But we also have markets for the factors of production or the inputs to production, and we call those factor markets. So we would draw factor markets down here. They would also have a square. And we can think about how the flow of both money and stuff is going in this economy. So if we think about the goods and services market, we have money going from households to firms, because the households are buying stuff. And we have stuff going from firms to households in return. Now the flow of money is the other way around in the factor markets because I don't know about you, but I like to get paid for my work. I don't pay to work somewhere. So in the factor markets, of which we can think about markets for labor, markets for capital, etc., the money's going from the firms to the households. So we can put the flow of dollars going this way, which is nice because it creates a closed loop of money which really explains why the economy can keep functioning. It just doesn't shut down eventually. It's only the government that shuts down. So here, we think about, well, what do the firms get in return? Well, in return, they're getting the factors of production. They're getting labor, capital, lands, and so on. And similarly here, this is going all the way to the firms. It doesn't stop. It's not eaten by the, the factor market. So you would see it keep going here. So now the problem is asking us to just take different scenarios and identify where they fit on this circular flow diagram. So let's think about how to do that. So part A says... Selena pays a storekeeper $1 for a quart of milk. So we see what's going on here. Well, we're in the market for goods and services because we have the households buying something. So the households buying something from the storekeeper is going to be the flow around here. So we can say that our part A is encompassing not only the flow of dollars, but if we're literally saying we're focusing on the dollar payment, then we would answer that our A is right here. If we're also considering the flow of the milk itself, then we would say that part A would also be here. But let's take a narrow definition and just say we're literally only talking about the act of paying the money, that that would just be this part here. Part B so Stuart earns four fifty per hour working at a fast food restaurant. I hope that this question was written a long time ago because that's far below minimum wage right now. We can think about, well, even this small payment, where does it fit in this overall market? 
So now we're talking about a household selling its labor, or a person in a household selling its labor. So we're talking about a factor market down here. And again, if we're literally talking about that dollar payment to Stuart, we're talking about Stuart, then we would say, well, what we're actually talking about is this line here in our circular flow diagram. Maybe I would label this B. But note that there's always two sides of this because we're always exchanging in a market. That yes, we have the 450 payment going from the firm to Stuart, who's in the household. But we also do have some labor going from the household to the firm. But again, taking this narrow definition, I'll we'll just put this here. Part C of the question. So Shauna spends $30 to get a haircut. Again, we have a trade there. We have a trade happening in the goods and services market. So at the very least, we could think about the $30 as going from the household, or we have Shauna in our household. Going from the household to the firm, but then to be complete about this, we would also keep in mind that, oh, we also have a service in this case. It wasn't a physical good, but it was a service going from the haircut place back to Shauna. But in any case, we're dealing with this side of the circular flow diagram. And last but not least, it says Sally earns $10,000 from her 10% ownership of Acme Industrial. Apparently Acme Industrial is much smaller than you would expect the average company to be, given that this 10% ownership doesn't seem to be getting her that much money. If I owned 10% of Apple, I'd be doing a little bit better than this. But nonetheless, she's getting some money. And so why is she getting money? She's getting money because she made an investment, because she supplied financial capital to a firm. So one of the factor markets is actually the market for capital which in some cases can be literal machines, but just as often can be financial capital as well. That we have households supplying financial capital to firms so that they can then buy actual capital or rent actual capital, that they can make some money in these markets here and provide a return back to households, right? So if we're gonna think about this dollar payment, this dollar payment is actually along this line here. And what's actually happening is that Miss Sally, in her household, supplied financial capital to the firm. And then the firm is paying her in the form of interest or dividend on her investment. So she gets some financial return that's represented by this line here.